Hey everybody, this is Sunny Justice with It's a Criming Shame. Now, of course, before we get started into this video, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing and please hit that like and the share. So in this video, we're going to talk about the JBN interview with Peter Falding. And then there's this other gentleman. I can't think of his name at the moment, but either or we're going to go through this together. Okay. And we're going to talk about the fact that yes, he did Claire. You're right. He did search the area. I thought he had, but then I remember him talking in another interview saying what he was tasked to do. But anyways, so I came across this footage and we're just going to go through it. Okay, guys. Selflessly joined the underwater search for the 45 year old says he's been made a scapegoat for the force's failings and former Met Police senior detective Simon Harding says the blame lies firmly with the police who he believes have let down Nicola's family with a string of mistakes and unanswered questions during the case. I'm delighted to be joined by both Peter and Simon now. So Peter let me start with you because your reputation has been on the line here and you feel like you are being made a scapegoat today. Absolutely, Simon. I mean, um, Dan, sorry, the um, police have been searching this river for three weeks with divers, with side scan sonar, the same equipment as we had, and river search teams plus dogs, and Nicola has not been found. We searched that part of the river, the lower part of the river, for just four hours and I can categorically say that from our sonar footage, which I've since reviewed, Nicola was not laying on the riverbed. I can't see into the reeds. I'm not going to make that very clear. And I've always said that to the media. We cannot see into the reeds, but we can see what's under the boat. And I've got a crystal clear image of the actual riverbed. OK, but you never specifically searched that part of the river where she was found? OK, Claire, this is where he answers it. So you don't have to send me anything because this is exactly where he answered it. Now, for anyone watching again, don't forget that when Peter Falding came in, guys, it was like 10 days after the fact as well. And also keep in mind the fact that obviously that's where she came to lay to rest. So as he's asking this question, um, remember, it's been said by um, Jason Rothwell that found her that it was about a quarter of a mile that she was floating down the river and landed in that spot when the police basically had arrived and then came of course to take poor Nicola Bully out of the water. Yes we did Dan, we, we trawled like the police every day um, with our sonar, they did with their sonar and there was no sign of Nicola on the, on the, under the water I should say, not in the reeds. We, our remit was not searching the riverbank or the reeds. I make that clear. So we run the sonar down on day one, down a couple, about two or three miles down that river, and we never saw no sign of Nicola. As did the police for the last three weeks with their sonar device either. So, do you think the police searched the reeds and the riverbeds properly? I can't really comment because I wasn't on that search. But all I can say is we searched. Now, let me just stop it there. Probably what he's truly thinking, and of course what he's saying, probably conflict with himself inside. Because uh, sadly, you know, you're not gonna sit there typically and just out and say that, you know, that they probably, you know, did miss her and stuff like that. So, you know, this is again where, you know, you have to play to the people, to the media and etc. because other than that, or else you're gonna feel the brunt and the wrath. Upstream where the bench was, where I could, I, I actually said, there's no way she'd gone in the river at this point by the bench, it's too shallow, and she wouldn't have drowned at that point, and she would not have got washed under the weir. And I can say that from, and I'm happy to do a test at any time to prove that, that she couldn't have gone in at that point. Okay. Okay, so again, so he'd happy to do that test at some point, to prove that she could have not have gone over the weir and that there's no way that Nicola Bully could have uh, gone in at the bench point. And so again, you know, well, we'll just listen to it more. Okay, because obviously what people are trying to work out, Peter, is yeah. was Nicola Bully in the river the entire time and not picked up by your search and by the police search or was she potentially put back into the riverbed? 
Well, you know, I, I don't want to start speculation. There is a potential. It's on a corner. It's a perfect deposition site, and it's right next to a wall. It, that is a possibility, but I don't want to spark speculation on that. But she was not... Now, again, just a reminder that that's where the final resting spot came, but that's not where she was originally because she was obviously back about a quarter of a mile, according to Jason Rothwell. So even though he's talking about searching that area, obviously he still would have been searching the area upstream. And that basically, like I said, without saying it, it's just like, you know, he's having a hard time believing, right? Due to all his work, due to the, probably even just simply like the depths of the water, which aren't even that great, that there's no way that he could have missed her, right? So unless of course she was in the reeds the entire time. But it wouldn't have been in that spot. Not in the river the day we searched. But the thing is with time. Rivers, what about where she was place. found specifically? What about where she was found specifically? Had you specifically I, I know you didn't look into the reeds in the river bit, but but the river Okay, like legit, he just finished asking Peter Falding this question. Did you search where Nicola Bully was found? He said yes. So I don't know why he's asking it again. Ben, did you specifically search there? Yes, we drove past it with a sonar. It was crystal clear. Nothing. And nothing absolutely no sign. Okay. Uh, no okay. sign. I would see. I would see a body extremely clearly on our sonar with, without okay. without fail. Okay. Well, look. Stand by. Uh, hmm. Former Met Police Senior Detective Simon Harding. What What do you think has gone on here? I think, I think firstly you've got to, you know, think of the timing of this really, that we, you've got to have um, a lot of sympathy for the family today Absolutely. and I think there's a time and a place where this will be dissected and, and you know, it, it's, it's going to go that way and, and you're looking at really... Now if I'm not mistaken, the inquest for this is in, they didn't give a date, they just said in fall of 2023. You know, the this started with a media problem. The uh, and a lot of people have touched on that, where the messaging that came out was, was wasn't quite as balanced as it should have been, and I think that will be looked at. Um, the police, albeit not on purpose, gave the impression that they were really fixed on one particular hypothesis and not the others. And I think. Do you think? Just a little bit. Or a whole, whole lot bit. They were a whole lot bit fixed on one thing. Then people started to think, well, the family don't believe you, so we're going to come and, you know, come to the scene. And then it became well, a real circus around the scene itself. Okay, so like I keep saying, who started this mess? Was it the public or was it the Lancashire police? Hmm. Hmm. Not a hard one, is it, guys? They started it. Um, but then I think you have to look at the fact that behind the scenes, the police, you know, I have spoken to people, police are doing a really good job, have done a really good job. The conventional things that you would expect to be done, and I have a lot of experience as an SIO uh, with murder scenes in London uh, and, and abroad, and I think you know, they, they have done what they needed to do. There are complications and, and in, in these kind of inquiries, missing persons inquiries, you know, hey, 170,000 people go missing a year and, and people don't want this sort of information and, and we got a feel for the family today and, you know, it, it was especially where they said, please leave us alone and it's become a bit of a circus down there. There's lots of things in this case which are going to come into question. The social media aspect to it. Couldn't How agree more. Couldn't agree more. And, and by the way, uh, you know, we've been fully transparent about this. They, uh, the, in the family statement, they were highly critical of the press. They were highly critical of two TV stations, Sly News and ITV. Okay, so I'm posing a question out there. I noticed that he called them Sly News and not Sky News. So in my head, I'm thinking, I know you guys call them Sly News, but that's kind of a rib at them, right? Because basically saying that, you know, they're kind of like a garbage news channel. So I'm just amazed that GBN's literally saying Sly News because I'm pretty sure that it's Sky News, but yet he uses the term Sly News. So I guess it's kind of like, you know, 
calling them that and putting them down. I just thought myself that, you know, when you're in the news media like this, that you uh, wouldn't really say things like that just for the sake of respect regardless. So, I don't know. You guys answer me on that one. Put it in the comments below, you know, because I thought sly news was kind of like a derogatory slang term for Sky News. Uh, I just want to clarify my position on this, which is that I didn't speak about this case until Thursday. And uh, I thought it was very important that the police and Peter were allowed to get on with their job because I, I saw the media circus that was developing. But when my view changed was when the police uh, went against what they'd said just hours earlier during the Wednesday press conference and released this highly personal information about Nicola Bully, including the fact that she was suffering from the menopause and that she seemed to have an alcohol problem. And I just think that absolutely crossed the line. But um, you guys exactly know how I feel on this point. There was no need of it. It was not our information to have. Again, the constant blame back to the public, and yet they're the ones that are making these disgraceful remarks that never should have been told to us. It was none of our business. Saying that she was high risk or had some mental health issues, absolutely. Okay, then that at least gave you the sense that, hey, you know, this is somebody that is definitely at risk, perhaps, of harming herself or hurting herself. But then to turn around and put out those vulnerabilities, again, that was lack of poor judgment on their part. But Peter, can we come back to the river specifically? Because what I'm just trying to get my head around is whether you think that it's possible that you missed Nicola Bully's body in some way and that all of the police search teams missed the body too because i completely agree we don't want to add to speculation but you can understand at the moment there are millions of folk around the world saying well peter fording said that the body wasn't in the river so the body must have been put in the river later on because you've got these two dog walkers one of whom is a psychic who end up discovering the body not the police i mean you know what whatever anybody says here Granted, that did only add to the fact that if Peter Falding said, look, she's not in the river, I can ca ca basically categorically say that after all my searching, you know, with all my great awesome equipment, that she is not in the river. So the thing is, is that again, it's kind of like when you're not experienced in the area that he is, and then you say things like that, of course it's going to catch people's ears. So that actually did add to more speculation that, hey, if Peter Falding is saying that she's not in the water, you know, and, and he searched it, and everyone believes in who Peter Falding is, right, as a searcher. And again, if you look at the river in itself, there's not a lot of deep areas there, guys, right? It's, it's not like you're in this ocean. You're in this small river that's in this, you know, throughout the town of St. Michael's on wire. And so, again, it's like it did definitely add to people's thoughts because I know it impacted me, too, because I was like, hey, but dude, you said that, you know, you can categorically say that she's not in the river. And so again, that's where exactly people were going, hmm, speculation, something obviously happened to her that she was put back in the water. So regardless of what anyone says, obviously that plays on people's minds like it did on mine as well because I'm, you know, she hasn't been found and you're just like going, well, you know what, if, if there's no evidence and Peter Folding says, then obviously, you know what, chances are she literally was not in that water. The, prob the problem is that the top part of the river above the weir it's non-tidal, it just flows one way. Once you get over the weir, it's, it's a tidal river. Now, any tidal river, and anybody who works on, on the Thames will tell you, it, things can get lodged in things called strainers, and especially on the corner, you know, on a bend. And the, the, obviously the I water swear. will rise and it will go I out swear. every six hours. There's a turn I was of the tide, to not make noise. and things can move out very quickly. We worked on one operation in Kent where a sheep was going up and down the river for two weeks, a bloated dead sheep.
and it came back to the same point every night. So it's, it can go out and it can come back in again. So there's a possibility that Nicola could have been lodged in somewhere else, a bit further upstream. But I, what I do find strange is that she hasn't gone very far. If she, she, I would have expected her to go further in three weeks than she did literally a few hundred yards just down the stream from the weir. That's what's got to me. Okay. And Simon Harding, where do you see this going? Because, of course, the Lancashire police now have to regain the faith of the public who feel very confused by what has, I believe, become a catastrophic PR and social media disaster. I mean, there were times, uh, seems to take Fali, I'm not going to lie, it felt like the Lancashire police were loving uh, the attention. You know, on social media, they were replying to weird posts about some member of the public making up a Lego figurine of uh, Detective Smith. It, it just felt inappropriate. Well, that in itself is... ...to weird posts about some member of the public making up a Lego figurine of uh, Detective Smith. It, it just felt inappropriate. Well, that in itself is inappropriate, isn't it? But the... Don't you guys think it's ironic that we're hearing the word Lego? And without even realizing it, I'm drinking out of a Lego cup. I just thought I'd put that in there. It's inappropriate, isn't it? Well, see, again, same thing, right? They were worrying about something. Instead of worrying about the focus at hand, which was finding Nicola Bully, they were too busy responding to stuff like that and social media. But remember, when there's one finger pointing back at you, like they were doing, there's three pointing right back at them. It. But the, I'll just go back to that point about speculation. Now, I've never speculated about what's happened. We've talked about the, the messaging at the beginning, which could have helped maybe stop quite a lot of what's happened, and, and also the potential cordoning of the scene itself yeah, to stop people. Done. But also, you know, don't, this, this isn't the end of the, of the tests that will go on. You know, unfortunately, there's going to be more tests uh, um, on Nicola because, you know, the idea that she's been put back in there as a deposition. It is a complete speculation. And but we'll be able to find out, will we? Yeah, they, will know, they will know, and the tests that, that, that go through will, will determine you can that tell one way or the other. Been submerged underwater. Yeah, well, that, there's lots there. of things that will happen around that, and I don't think, you know, that's, that's, that's going to be hugely, you know, un unpopular to hear that for a lot of people, and that's in terms of speculating that, that she's been put back in there, because that's just not, that's not the case. There's no evidence of that at all, and, and let's wait for the factual evidence that comes out of the tests. But at the moment, I think now it is, let's get away from that family and leave them time to... Couldn't to, agree more. To, you know, to Couldn't agree more. Happened. I've gone through utter hell. Utter hell. I think my point is that quite a lot of it has been to do with the way the Lancashire Police decided to handle the case. But look, former Met uh, Police Senior Detective Simon Harding, thank you so much. And Forensic Search and Rescue Specialist. Okay, you guys. So, obviously, again, there, it's like... Um, Oh, boom. Well, let me just move myself there. Boom, 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 boom. Anyways, you guys, again, just put your thoughts and comments in this video. Again, now I'm going to play day 24 because there's 24 more days up until um, Nicola Bully's inquest. Um, it's the third, but you guys aren't going to see this in the UK. It's going to be the fourth already. You guys totally forgot um, because I was too busy thinking about other things and I, then I was it's like 750 my time right now in Canada so I was like oh poop I gotta get out my 24th day one so anyways you guys um, justice for Nicola answers hopefully put your thoughts and comments in this and of course yes Claire yes you were right you know so I, ha I had to second guess that after I watched that interview with uh, Peter when he was saying like we were tasked here and we were tasked there but yet I could have swore that I saw him in that spot as well but anyway so there's your proof right there anyways you guys take care have a great night God bless and please hit the like and the share and if you're not a subscriber please consider subscribing take care
No words of comfort anyone can say. I've never felt a pain like this before. A piece of my heart died with you. But I guess heaven needed you more. But I can't understand exactly what for. Is this a trial of my faith? A lesson to be learned. Why did my baby come to earth and then so quickly return? I gotta get up off the floor and trust that heaven needed you. Came home to an empty nursery. Your cries and laughter won't fill this room. This was not the way I planned it. Oh Lord, I'm needing comfort from.